Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are, on the face of this very planet, we welcome you to a very special broadcast, a very special address from my humble self this very day, the 30th day of May in the year of our most high Elohim Chukukikabiyama Purumi Yanine 2020 with the time now standing at approximately I should say three minutes past 7 p.m. in the land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour regardless of where you are domiciled I welcome you and on behalf of the marvelous family of IPOB all over the world, I welcome you also and I will encourage you to welcome all those who are around you because today is a very special day in the history of our people. On this very day, 53 years ago, our indisputable and ultimate leader for eternity, Dim Chukwemeka Odimegu Juku, acting under the divine instruction of Elohim, instituted and proclaimed the restoration of Biafra. That very day we have chosen as a very pivotal date in the history of our people, and for us in this very era, a day of remembrance, a day of mourning of all those that passed in that very terrible conflict that I call the Third World War. Not minding anything that may have transpired in the past. Not being shackled by the limitations of the conspiracy of those that have always maintained that we cannot survive. We have continued ceaselessly and remorselessly to pursue the restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth, and that is Biafra. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because for some it is your morning, for some it is your middle of the night, for some it is your evening, for some people, like those in Australia and New Zealand, it is the very early hours of the next day. I welcome you. Make sure you bring your pen and paper with you because this night, although we shall be a bit brief, we are going to cover as many critical issues as possible. And I will also ask you to get your friends and your neighbors, gather them around you that they may partake in this very epistle this evening. Our enemies are not relenting, they are working very hard, but that is not going to deter or stop us. We are going to continue relentlessly until Biafra is restored in our time. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over the world, and by the very special grace of Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We have come that that which has been prophesied may come to fruition. Before we proceed, we are going to pray as always. And this evening, if you don't, if you don't have your pen and paper ready with you, you are going to miss a lot. Because a lot of the things that I'm going to say, say are very, very important. They are historical facts which we must note for posterity because i will not return to this ever again i will not we must proceed this evening not minding anything our enemies are doing because we will always be under immense attack from facebook from all the workers of iniquity and all those who do not like freedom they will do all they can to stop us, but they can never, ever succeed. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. Because we have come to do that, which we have been mandated to do. 
and Elohim is on our side, and we are going to prevail. We must prevail, and we need to pray. Very, very important, please. Indeed, we trust, O Elohim, on this very special day that only you have made, that we remember your sons and your daughters that perish, that we may live, those who sacrifice their lives to protect their children, to protect their families, to protect their loved ones, to protect their nation, Biafra. It is unto thee that we repose every trust. You will not allow this generation that they fought for to be put to shame. You will not allow our enemies to triumph over us. For no one hopes in you and ever come out in shame. But shame shall encompass all of them who are treacherous. Shame shall be the portion of all the saboteurs both dead and living, shame shall become and will be the portion of those that persecute your children. You will show us your way, for we are nothing without thee. You will teach us your paths. You will guide us in your truth. You will teach us, O Elohim, because you are Chukokika Biyama, our Savior and our Redeemer, and our hope is in you and you alone. Every day, every morning, every night, we ceaselessly call upon your holy name that you may have mercy upon us, that your love and your grace may abide within us. Do not remember the sins of our youth. Do not remember the sins of our fathers and our ancestors. Do not count our rebellious ways against us. According to your love, O Elohim, please have mercy upon us and give us Biafra in our time. For we are upright in thy word. For we are guided by the instructions you have laid down in your commandments that sin may not have any hold over us. Come and guide us in your humble way and teach us to be that which you have destined us to become. For we have no other God apart from thee. We have no other creator apart from thee. For the sake of your name, not for anything that we may have done, not for any righteousness that we may have possessed. Elohim, forgive us our iniquity and have mercy upon us. Grant us, Biafra, in our time that your name may be exalted, that your name may be praised, that your name, O Elohim, may be lifted up above every other name. Now and forevermore, we pray. He say, he say, he say, Mama Dregi Chineke. Mama Dregi Chineke. We have come to preach the gospel of heaven. We have come that the truth may prevail. We have come that the enemies of Biafra may flee. We have come that this very gospel of truth may be propagated to the ends of the earth. We have come that darkness may flee and light will come in. It doesn't matter what our enemies do. We remain committed. We remain resolute. We remain dedicated to this very cause of the restoration of Biafra. We are unbiable. We are unbribable. You cannot intimidate us. You cannot frighten us away from this very cause we have embarked upon. There is nothing the enemy can do. Darkness, as I keep saying, cannot prevail over light. And this very day will bring you light. We must proceed because we only have roughly two hours this evening. But always remember that our enemies are numerous and they will do everything they can within their powers, both morally and immorally, to try to dissuade us, to try to get us not to pursue that which we have been born to do. 
which is to restore Biafra, nothing more, nothing else. Not to own mansions, not to own flashy cars, not to own choice properties. In the, busy, in the busiest and the biggest cities you have in the zoo, we have not come to do any of that. We have not come to serve the Janjaweed. We have not come to serve Alamajiri. We have not come to bow before any of them. We have not come that we may become frightened of what they may or may not be capable of doing. We have come to do that which is right before man on this earth and to go and put me in heaven. That is why we must prevail. It doesn't matter what they do. Regardless of what they do, we must prevail. This is Radio Biafra. We are live and we are direct. I am not Aisha's boyfriend in Asarok. Neither am I the dead Jubril. I am not Buharid. I am a Namdekano and I lead IPOB. And I will lead this movement until Biafra is restored. And as I keep saying, if we work diligently hard, between now and the end of the year, Biafra will come. Others may want to go and claim glory for what they did not work for, but they are wasting their time. Because our people are sensible, they are reasonable, they are intelligent, they are discerning. You know the criminals when they come. BBC, we assembled them today, with the exception of our sister, Onye Kumwenu, assembled a gang of thieves, a gang of criminals, people that lie through their teeth. This evening, I will decimate them. I don't believe in giving people undue publicity on this platform, but since they have gone on to lie against me, to lie with my name, I will destroy them. Completely and totally. That in their next life, when they hear IPOB, they will run and they will take cover. This very day, we remember those that died, that we may leave those who fought, that Biafra may be restored and that the land kept, or else all of you would have been like a makeover by now. You'll be serving danger with it. You will have a spot on your forehead. You will be worshipping a god that our ancestors never knew. You will live probably in Abuja in Lagos, talking nonsense all the time about one Nigeria. Your life would have been hopeless. As the Janjaweed are coming in to take over our land, you would have been busy yapping rubbish as they always do, as all the traitors do, as all the supporters do. That is what they have always done, and that's what they'll continue to do. But we are here. I will say to call them out to speak the truth that the whole world may bear us witness. Those that paid the ultimate price in various battlefields across Biafra land, they died. That what is happening today may not happen. It is a shame that those of them in America have been taken away by the sweetness of oversized hamburger have decided to forget where they come from. We have come that that very promise of a truly free and independent Biafra may be brought to bear in our time. Biafra was the only country to attempt genuine independence out of Africa. Every other country you see in Africa, Africa what they have is flag independence, with the exception of South Africa. They only have flag to signify their independence, but in actual fact, in their day-to-day -day transactions of governance, they not independent. That is why they go begging any time they are affected by even the most inconsequential of diseases. They fly to Europe and to America to ask for help. They cannot reason. They cannot sustain the economies. What deem Chukwemeko Nogojuku, our general did 53 years ago was to bring in Given freedom into Africa. It is very sad and unfortunate that it was the same Africans who conspired against him and made sure that the will of Harold Wilson prevailed, that the will of British neo colonialists and their agents in Janjaweed, with the help of a few rubber men, conspired to extinguish that very hope. Not that Nigeria fought and defeated Biafra, of course not. They never did. It was Britain that fought. Biafra. It was a proxy war. Howard Wilson was fighting a proxy war against Biafrans, using the Janjaweed and a few Yoruba people, and also Russia, Yugoslavia, Egypt, 
Saudi Arabia, OAU, the whole country against a very tiny Biafra. And that is why this very day we must continue. It doesn't matter what our enemies, it doesn't matter what they do. We must continue ceaselessly until the zoo collapses and Biafra is born. As I told you many years ago, I remember there was a time I was speaking to one of us today. I said, you know, better when I tell you that as soon as Biafra is closer, they will unleash all their demons against us via the media. They will try to impugn our integrity. They will try to lie against us. That is what they have done. They have realized that this IPOB, through the grace of Elohim, we have collapsed the zoo. They know that very well. Our enemies understand this. They know we have done the job. They know we have collapsed the zoo completely. That is why they are all over the place, yapping, both those who are normal and those who are insane. But this evening, I will cure their illness. You know me very well. And my Gwandiara, this evening I'll cure them with facts and with figures. Because they know I don't lie. Because the only thing you can say to a beautiful woman is go and have a shower. Because you don't have anything to say to her. But here today we are going to speak the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. As always. Because in Biafra, Africans try to create a genuine democracy. A genuine land of the free. A land that black people will be proud of all over the world. It was the same black people that conspired with white people to extinguish Biafra. That is why everybody is suffering today. That is why a black man in Africa will be a white company like Facebook to make sure that the truth is not heard by the people. That is why everybody is poor in the zoo. And that's Africa as a whole, I must add. Poverty, ignorance, disease, and pestilence is the price you pay for self-betrayal. Africa, Africa was betrayed in Biafra. Those who worked against Biafra thought that somehow they were advancing their self-interest, not knowing that I think the in the foot, and today hasn't happened. Look at how poor and wretched everyone is. You are complaining. You are burdened by the yoke of terrorism. All of you are suppressed by the ignorance that you brought upon yourself as a result of a dilapidated system of education. You have no health care. You have no running water. You have no simple electricity you do not have. Something that occurs that you need to have. You are suffering today because you worked against Biafra. Some of you are suffering today because you betrayed your own conscience. But we must continue. We were betrayed, sabotaged, abandoned. Everything they can think of. But we survived it. They gave birth to children. Us. And we have begotten children. And they themselves will also bear children. That is to say that Biafra is unstoppable. Nobody can stop it. That is why we salute this very class of 67 to 1970. I call them the immortals because every 30th of May, every year, forever and ever, we shall remember them and we shall honor them. Midnight yesterday into this morning, on the 29th, we lit become across the whole of Biafra land. Some of you may not know what it means. But when we started the of May Remembrance, we were the ones that built a cenotaph. We are the ones that made it compulsory that we must do something every year to be great, to show our gratitude and thanks to those that fought and died for us that we may live to commemorate their sacrifice. It was IPOB and nobody else. Not Ohaneze, not Pandev, not on any elders. Nobody did. Only IPOB did it. Because as I keep saying all the time, we are under divine instruction. That is why after tonight's program, you'll understand why we say we are whiter than white and whiter than snow. And I know that some Alamajiri we are complaining. They say, oh, he had his mouth. 
on the on the left side now is on the right side but they know there's something called mirroring that what we are doing today is being mirrored by the system that i'm using but this is how you know you wear this this piece this lapel on the left hand side that is how you know the left side of a person's face you wear this on the left and this is the left hand side of my face now you're following don't you depending on the device you're using if you're using something like mine your face can become mirrored if you do not understand i will explain that to you very carefully and as we proceed this evening some of you may become disconnected by Facebook. If they disconnect you, go back in again. I know that's what they do. I sipped water because none of those things that have an answer can do what I can do. They cannot, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. A beacon was lit for our people to symbolize that we have reached our peak spiritually. We have peaked in this struggle in ten yesterday, 12 midnight. We kept it a secret. We didn't want anybody to know. Our beacon was lit right across the whole of If you don't know the spiritual symbolism of lighting a beacon, I suggest you Google it and try and find out. Midnight of the 29th of May 2020 was when IPOB reached the peak in the, in the spiritual realm of this agitation. And that is why Biafra will come this year. If you follow instructions and do exactly as you're told, Biafra will come this year. If you do as you're told, our enemies are going to come to deflect your attention, to tell you one rubbish or the other. They will come with very fantastic tales and stories. You must remain focused. You must remain focused. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Once you are distracted, you've lost it. That is the game plan. It is a beacon. We have reached the point in our spiritual journey where we can be described as a beacon of light. That hope was lit 12 midnight on the 29th. That hope. Anytime you look at that beacon, that beacon represents something that has never been attained anywhere in the whole of Africa. That we are the light. That's who we are. And there is nothing the enemy can do. They can't think of these things. That's what we call the... Uh, 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 Elder one, all these criminals, they can't. You have to be in the spirit to think of lighting a beacon to spiritually immortalize what those that died for you stood for. That is who we are. Every instruction we get is heaven, not from man. That is why we do things that ordinary mortals cannot easily think about. They we are all there. And we said 30th of May. All of them, we are there with their academia. Even those who carry in their boom, 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 If you go, oh, I have this document. So I have this map here. Idiots everywhere. Making a fool of their stupidity. Today we cure them. We have earned the light. Because last night we lit the beacon. This IPOB. Remember this IPOB. You will never be forgotten. The same way we remember our heroes is how IPOB will be remembered forever and ever. We have earned that right. We built the center of Enugu. Niamodo did not. No elder built it. Nobody did. Who was wicked destroyed it? A cenotaph. You're telling me the only people that lost 5 million people within the space of three and a half years. We lost 5 million people. There was no commemoration, not one single one, until I built a cenotaph in Enugu. Are you listening? Nobody knew about that church of May until we came. How should I say? On to Chico Kikabi, I'm determined that we should come. Some of you don't know what we are doing. 
some of you are ignorant of the mystery behind what IPOB stands for. But Fulani is about to teach you, the they will teach you the importance of IPOB. They will teach you. We must continue. They built nothing. It was the creek destroyed it. The, the pig in the creek spitting all over mobile device screen did not think about it. They don't remember those that fought. They have not. They can't do what we are doing. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. They can't do it. If any of these traitors, I am, the reason why I am picking on traitors is the last time I'll talk about them. That is why I asked you to bring your pen and your paper. Write everything down that I'm going to say to you. Write everything down that I'm saying to you. Everything you must write it down on a piece of paper that you may be able to understand. Not tomorrow you say I didn't hear about it. Tonight I'm going to tell you. I am preaching about Sabu to us tonight because it was them that destroyed the dream of Biafra. Saboteurs destroyed Biafra. That is why tonight I will pick on them. One after the other. And as I make my points to write down so you can go and ask them later on. For some of you who are still in contact with them. Go and ask Mudo, why didn't Tohanes ever think of immortalizing those that died? Because they're in the pocket of Janjaweed. I was a Fulani. Not I was, I'm sorry. Fulani. They're in the pockets of Fulani. Janjaweed. The Alamaji are the ones controlling them. All your governors, did they think about this? No, they never did. It is those that they call miscreants. Can you see how Elohim works? Those they call miscreants are the ones reminding them of their own history. Reminding them of what is right. Reminding them of what needs to be done. Reminding them of what has to be done in our land for us to proceed and go and get Biafra. They claim they love you. Traitors! They say they love you. Isn't it? Have you seen where we are today? Some send representations. Oh, you are insulting people. And I say to them, you are, you are a fool if you say I'm insulting you. Because that means you've done something wrong. I can't come out and insult or speak in the manner that I do against anybody doing the right thing. Have you ever seen me do that before? Anybody that we castigate, there is a, I give you reason. Not coming out, oh, he, he's a scammer. Oh, he, he, he stole money. Tonight you will tell me. If you've ever contributed one dime to IPUB, now but you will tell me this night. Those that we stand, you will tell me, give us their names this night. Or else, shame will be upon you and your family, your children, forever and ever. Wherever we see them, we will know that their parents are sabotaged. to us. Wherever we find them, they will be taunted for the rest of their lives. Because we're a, you are an evil person. You can lie against somebody who is dead, not somebody who is living. You can't lie against somebody who is living. As Zimbabwe said, What's the way? Come and take your dry fish. It's not possible. They were lying, thinking I won't respond. I'll give you that publicity you want. I'll give it to you tonight. But to the healthy dose of destruction. So that the world will know who you are. That you're a thief. You're a rogue. With reason. With reason. People go about talking nonsense. Every time. Any of these traitors or so-called opinion leaders that, that ever declare we love them, we love our people, why did you not talk about that to me? Why wait for IPOB? Why? I'm asking you. Why wait for IPOB? They're going to destroy those liars tonight. It was a to go to Kabiyama. This night, after our beacon yesterday, we are not interested in restructuring. We are not. I am sounding this note of caution to those that say, oh, you, nobody consulted. And we are just warning you. I am not interested in your restructuring. I am not interested in your regional government arrangement, 1960 constitution, 1960 I am not interested in your new Nigeria movement. I am anything with Nigeria in it. Cut me out. I'm not interested. Neither am I interested in whatever concoction 
that you compromised people, you traitors, are negotiating behind our back. Do you think we don't know? Do you think we don't know what is happening behind our back? We know everything. The Janjaweed are in our land because of the traitors we have. These are the people that enabled, encouraged, emboldened the Janjaweed to invade our land. Because the Janjaweed understand that the likes of Ohanese are impotent. They understand that the likes of Ohanese is working with Al Mustafa. They understand that that idiot with a file is working for a new Nigeria. They understand that the pig in the creek is working for their masters in the north. And that bloated pig, always talking rubbish and spitting everywhere, that pig is like another Afonja in our land. That pig, that pig is an agent of darkness in our land. If you don't know, I will tell you tonight. Because he's a criminal, and I'll prove it. As I'm saying it, I'm mentioning names. As I kept saying, Bring your pen and paper. I will not discuss this again. And I'm asking all our admin, you are going to segment this very broadcast and cut it out to fit the very purpose for which we are making it tonight, which is the response to all these traitors. It was their fathers that betrayed Biafra. It was their relatives that betrayed Biafra. They have come again to betray us. They have come again, and we can't allow them. Not that they, they, they underestimate us. And long may it continue. Maybe that's why we are as formidable as we are. Janja, we are in our land. And in order, listen carefully, in order to stop ABOB from fighting the Janja weed, they know we need arms. They know we need ammunition. I've been saying this since 2015 in America. I've been sounding it as a warning. When I met Wodo, I told him, ask Wodo, did I tell him this thing or not? When I met you in your house, did I say to you that the Fulanis will come? We need to be prepared or not? Did I say that to you? And what was your answer? Who was Before they kidnapped me, sent people to disrupt my traditional marriage in 2009. Did I tell you about the need for us to be armed or not? In a hotel room in London. Do you remember? Which of was there? Amarachi was there. Chuku Megemba was there. Some woman was there in front of everybody. I told you we need arms and ammunition. And what did you say when you went back? You abandoned everything we discussed. True or false? I ask you a direct question. True or false? I, I call people who are present. That's how I am. I speak the truth. I tell you people who are present. Not one knows those who, who, who were present in his, in his place. Who went there? Elliot Uko was there. My PA Kwema was there. And a whole host of other people. I always have backup and proof. There's also an idiot with a file. Or Imo River Congress, or is it Lower Imo River? I don't know where that one comes from. I met you at the office of Ndubisi Kano many years ago. I've only met you two times, in, three times in my life. The first time was I went to go and see the BC Colonel. I don't know who you are. I went to the BC Colonel's office in February. I don't know who you are from Adam. And as all of him who have it, I was there with somebody. When you're telling all this, your lies, you don't know there are people who were present. You remember somebody called Awogo. Then he was the publisher of Eastern Pilot. Today, I think he Transition committee, chairman, you know, Baro, former senior special advisor to Obiano. Awog was with me. Awog drove me from his house to go and see the music channel. To see the music channel will help me fund Radio Gaffer. If you forgot, 
I respect him to be this kind of thing tomorrow morning. Every day, every time, everywhere I go to, I respect him to be this kind of I went to his office. I know what he told me. He believed in one Nigeria. He said, no, don't. Know. He, he asked me to change the name of Radio Biafra to Ogun and when I said no. We, I had tea. We parted amicably. Until tomorrow morning, I still respect him and adore him. On my way out of the busy camel's office, you accosted me on the whole way. Me and Awog. Ari is Awog. He's alive. He's a local government chairman. He was the one that accompanied me to do a video in Amansia. If you can, it's on YouTube. Long time ago, I did a video saying, telling you that the are coming, they're armed. It's on YouTube. Go and check it. Go and Google it. I told you, you asked me to come into an office. I asked you, what are you doing here? You said you're fighting for Nigeria. I kept quiet for four hours. You were talking about this for four hours. I was quiet. I didn't talk to you. When you finished talking all your nonsense, as my father taught me, I demolished all your arguments to two questions. I asked you, why are you afraid of using the name Biafra? That was the first question I, I, the first question I asked you. You did your carrying file and lying behind my back, going to America and gossiping like an idiot all over the place, inboxing people, writing drunk. I kept quiet until you came out in the open. Today I will destroy you completely because you're a criminal, you're a thief. And I will tell the world how you're a thief with proof. All the nonsense you're saying about me, you have no nothing, not one single proof. Out of envy and jealousy. I have told you many times, tell him, send me. I didn't send myself. I didn't wake up one morning and say, I want to go and do Jaffra. No. Everything you sent me. I met you. I hope you're writing it down, all of you. I met you for four hours in the Bitsi Kano's office in Kofa Bayomi in Lagos, Victoria Land. You are talking all your junk. How you managed to speak to, speak to Asari, speak to Wazirike, speak to all these, all these traitors. How you spoke to them. And they all came into your new Nigeria plan. And I asked you, is it all the things you're saying, is it about new Nigeria? You said yes. And I told you I'm not interested. I asked you, why are you putting the name Lower Nigeria Congress? What's the meaning of that name? You couldn't tell me. You said it is to, it's to disguise it. So not let others know. I said, why are you hiding it? I was in Israel. I went to Jerusalem. I met a policeman. The police, the, the, the district head of Israeli police. Israeli police told me face to face, if you want to do the I should go to the Knesset. And Israeli said, go to the Knesset. Stay there until they support Biafra. And nobody support you behind the back. They should come out and you to support you. When I was in Israel and that man said that thing, I remember what I told you. You fool, carrying file, all of, lying against me. I don't know who you are. I met you once. We sat down once with Awog, Harin's Awog. He's alive. God asked me. After we met Harin's, after myself and Harin's met you, we left. And I told Harin's as we were climbing down the stairs, that you're a man. Your brain is not correct. Biafra that people died. For you are telling me I should hide the name, I should disguise it, not not call it Biafra. We should hide. You were trying to recruit me into your new Nigeria rubbish, and I told you now I'm not part of it. That's our first encounter. My other second encounter with you was when I was brought from detention to High Court. I don't know who you are. I saw you, and you told me in the brief time. Uh, when I was walking out of the courtroom, you met me and I said, oh, how are you? You said, fine. I said, are you part of my defense team? You said, you came. And I know what I told you because you're a, you're a very terrible liar and an awful human being. I told you that and then. I said, can you be the spokesperson of this movement? There are people blocked head bridge furniture. I put on coming together. Can you be the spokesperson? What did you say? Told me you cannot talk about Biafra inside the courtroom of John Tozo in Abuja. The next day I came to court and I asked a judge, where is a, and I thought he said it's part of the team. He said it's not part of 
of the team. Who told you he is? Did I see you again? Until you accompanied Soludo to come to prison to see me. How many minutes? This is the second time I met you we did not spend up with five minutes. And this person, I was walking and we were talking. The third time you came to Kujen, that time Benjamin Madubu was with me. David, when we see, was with me. You came with Usukomona an organization that I still respect and have regard for till tomorrow morning. There are the very few that I actually have regard for. Akikenga is one. Second one is Usukomona. The rest are just a bunch of jokers. And I told why I like Akikenga because of three men that I met. Three men that I met in Lagos. Of one of them is even a big way. The other one is um what's his name again? The former ACB chairman. What's his name? Oh my goodness. And the third one is um my brother from Old Omoa that took me to that meeting in the year 1999. If you don't know when we started. Tony, now you came to the prison, we were talking about rubbish about the referendum. I told you that I talked about the referendum way back. In 2012, that was what I told you. I told you that. And then people asked me, How do you intend to get Biafra without firing a gun? I said, We will agitate, we will keep on agitating. And finally, the will of a referendum go to my the recordings I made, the broadcast I made in 2012. They're all there. You said, You told me, yeah, Let us get to you. Are, you asked me in Kujia, let's come together and collapse the constitution. And I told you, No. I am going for Biafra. I'm not interested in New Nigeria. Mordecai Mordecai is there. Benjamin Mordecai was there with me. Are you going to lie? I had proof. When you left Kuje and I was released from bail, did I ever meet you again? Did you come to my house? Did you call me on the phone? You sent a few people that were later to betray IP to be talking to me about an accord. And I said, what accord? I was a detainee. I was in a prison. My people came to see me. Soludo and very eminent people came to see me. He accompanied them. So what are you talking about? Which accord? Where? He said prison. You said accord. He said prison. After that, when those you're working for saw that IPOB was making progress, they sent you to go after me. You started to inbox people since 2017. People, you don't know you were helping to spread my name. You thought, you were, because there's a second who come, who will live to Kenya. You thought by going with the name of the Khan, somehow people will abandon IPOB and follow you. You don't know how people are very sensitive. You don't know, you don't know how intelligent we are. You were lying to them about me. And when they listen to IPOB, when they listen to my brother, they'll say, oh my goodness, this is not what they told me about you. You don't know that? I allowed you. For how many years now you've been gossiping, inboxing people lies about me? Where did I sit down to discuss in detail what you're doing with that useless lower Niger Congress or whatever rubbish you call it? You are the Secretary General. Do you have any president? Do you have a secretary? Do you have a treasurer? It's only you. It's only you, one man band, funded by China Weed, talking rubbish every blessed day. Can you call for a meeting? Can you call a meeting? You are pre banking at, at the back of um, our, our dear sister, Antio Briggs. Her confession, you watch her. You are like a parasite, a pest. Always going to where people are prepared so you can attach yourself. You're a saboteur. That's, that's why I am dissecting you today. To tell you you're a liar. You call me, you know me, I don't hide anything. You called me a scammer. You said I'm a thief. You said I stole something from you. If you don't tell me what I stole from you, I will instruct my lawyers to make you to cause even in a useless zoo like that. Because you are a deceiver. Tell the full and man that sent you that you didn't save you. We are not in the same league. I went to America. I decided to run to America after me. I go to, to California. You go to California after me. After having a time meeting, you go and call some idiots like you, gossiping with my name. 
you never met me face to face. When the elders of people land in America begged me to see you, they begged me. I said, okay, bring him. Let me destroy him face to face. You ran it. You didn't come to that meeting. You gave an excuse. You don't want me to do say you must get the meeting. A traitor will get the meeting with me. Are you insane? You see all your lies. You see all the lies you've been telling. I'm asking you tonight. Did your guy give me money? Didn't the kind of give me any money? Who did I scam? I'm asking you. Who gave me money that you know? Come on and say it. If you say who gave me money to do Biafra and I ate, I embezzled that money, I will resign for the money. If you tell me who said to you, I gave money to Nam the Khan to do Biafra, I will resign tomorrow morning. Evil men are stingy. They don't give anybody money. Go and ask. He guess you're stupid. Go and ask. Evil men don't give money to anybody to do anything. They are all prepared by Fulani people. They don't give money to Biafra. That was one of the oaths they took. I know these things. If you don't, let me tell you. No evil rich man of the can give one dime to do Biafra. Never. Or was Rike got his payment direct from the federal government? Not from Tukumerij. Tukumerij negotiated it for him. He got his paper, he got his money direct from the zoo. They sent people to come and buy me in Kuja. I said no. I was in detention. They came to me, offered me everything, and I said no. They gave me vice president of Nigeria, and I said no. Are you insane? Is it uh, uh, poor, wretched people? I'm going to be asking for money. So, because. Anything we want to do, we do it. Somehow, I will be full of cash. And I think, evil man, evil man will give you money. No, not evil man, let me see. Let me see. Only our brother, Chief, can give us money to go and install FM in our land. Only one person. Don't we have FM in Biafra land? Don't we have FM in Biafra land? Because you like gossip. Because evil men, they love to gossip. You see, you see the grown-up people and love to... Some were asking me, eh, but they said, uh, man, they can't embezzle the money. And I asked, them, I asked the person that I sent to the man and I, to ask him, have you contributed to IPOB before? You have not contributed to IPOB. Not one day. But somehow, you're saying about um, embezzlement. Scamming people. This was the, the word you connived. You and your janja with friends. You sat together, you connived. You know Igbo men are weak. That idiot with the jealousy, they know Igbo men are weak. They know once you go to an Igbo man, you talk about money, you talk about embezzlement, they will not support you because they know the Fulani are coming. In order to stop Igbo men from supporting them, the colonel, to buy weapons to defend our land. What they decided to do was to gossip all over the place, including one idiot now that went about telling politicians if you support them, the can, he's going to buy weapons to kill everybody. You think I don't know? After gossiping for three years, it didn't work. You now came out in the open. I stole your template and your blueprint. You are insane. I don't know who you are. I met you once. You were rambling rubbish. I asked. I allowed you to talk for four hours. After speaking rubbish, for, I asked only two questions. Why are you abandoning the name Biafra? The people died on that. Number one question. And number two, what is this news about New Nigeria? You couldn't answer and I left it. How work? How work was there going to ask him? This is how all your lies came to nothing. You people go about, right? He's a scammer. He gave money for the first fund. All the idiots, like him, they never one dime to defense fund the whole of america people the whole of america did not contribute up to three thousand dollars which is not the, the price of ticket if i want to fly from here to asia the whole thing they claim they contributed in the whole of america you see the uh, defense fund the first how much did you contribute I talk about it to remind you that the time like this is coming. When Fulani will be in our land and we will not have arms to defend our land. You think the Fulani are stupid? They know that there are no arms. That's why they have come. And instead of us to discuss them and handle them, 
They send some of you saboteurs to be talking nonsense. Oh, no, the colonel, he, he is a scammer, the ambassador. And I'm asking you, who did I scam? Where? When? You can't tell me. Because you're lying. Mood helped you to be spreading the gossip. All those uh, fulefus in Abuja and Lagos that never considered one dime to IPOB. Our outgoing every blessed month from IPOB account in Germany, every month we spend $108,000 a month. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing with it because you can tell you, you can tell your friends in Sokoto, all of you criminals. All of you idiots, every fool who come talk about that you speak called as a red or that I gave money to from inside the prison because he has no shame. All of you want to from inside the prison. I gave that idiot 20 million naira. I was in prison. He was so poor. I gave I authorized for him to be given 20 million. Our men went to Iguacha. That same bloated pig went and called DSS to go and arrest my men. In a word, and he gave the money to you today. But people have no shame. What are you talking about? Did I give you money or not? I was in prison. And I organized the meeting in Kotonu, in your house in Kotonu, with our men, my men to go to Kotonu. They were from all over the world to Kotonu to go and see you. After that meeting, I asked you, how do we proceed from here? You demanded for 200 million naira. You bloated, dirty, filthy, poor pig. Did you ask me for 200 million or not? I don't talk to you, Chen Nasiebu, anymore. They don't treat us. Did, did you not talk to him about it? Did I not give you Chen Nasiebu authorization to give you money? How much money have you collected from me? You shameless pig. Say I'm a con artist. Now the guy is a con artist. When you are the one that stole from me, I gave you money for us to do something kind of agreement. You want to call DSS? Yes or yes or no? I'm asking you, true or false? And you're a freedom fighter who is in love with his with his oppressor. You're in a zoo. You're in a zoo. You're not ashamed of yourself. You're coming out and talking rubbish. I will ask you again: How much money did I give you? Mm -hmm. 2016. You said you will organize men. How much did I give you? How much did we give you to support Avengers? When I was in prison, which you ate. Avengers never got the money. And you're here talking rubbish as always. And anyway, my happiness is that the generation know who you are. They know you're a traitor. They warned me. They say you're a traitor. And now I know you are. You see, it's called a double agent. You come again, well, Biafra, Biafra. Everybody must be in Biafra. It's a lie. You don't have the liberty for it. You don't. You don't have the discipline. If I'm going to be like all of you fools, living on the crumbs from the master's table, I'll be a very wealthy man. I don't have any need for it. I went to Dick Organ that some useless fools cannot find in Abba. It's called Green Street Primary School. When I was there, it was called Cameroon Road End Primary School. I keep saying it all the time. I went to Library Avenue, where I had the best of the best. Common College, where I had UNN, University of Nigeria and Soka. I told my father that if I remain in this school, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll become more stupid than a monkey. My father sent me to go to London to go and study. And you open your mouth and you're talking rubbish. I didn't take money from Nigeria when I was in prison, when I was in detention. Is the is the is the money that you money doesn't have that I can take? Who from Jordan has come money to IPOB before? Who I'm asking you? Con artist, con, con artist, con who? Or did you steal from me? Did I give you twenty million or not? From prison, I gave the order. Did I give you money or not? Yes or no, we'll do. You are a fool. And a very filthy one at that. We must continue.
have now brought in BBC. BBC. We are Britain left off the handbook in BBC. Look at the idiots they assembled, with the exception of Onyeko. They are idiots to discuss Biafra. None of them can wear this. None. No, nothing to remember. Nothing. They asked the idiot, what can you tell the viewers? What is your name? He brought a map. That is the idiot I'm going to be discussing with. But we're asking you, they, you claim that Fulani is uh, in a boy killing people. We went there with this anybody. You know BBC. BBC, boy. The type of thunder that will kill you hasn't been formed yet. You think I will allow your nonsense? You don't know we did history. We don't, you, you, you don't know that we know what BBC did between 66 and 1970. Do you think we are stupid? That you bring in BBC, bro. you think we are that? Do you think we are we are insane? We allow you to come and deceive us? You are you are, you are not well. You can do that nonsense. You do that. And that's idiot. Carrying file, Tony Nade. You complete idiot. A liar. You can carry from now to morning. Nothing can happen. I give the order. One command only is all it takes. I give the order. And when the time comes, I will give it. Wasting your time. Uh, my panel is this. All you traitors were the reason why we failed. And your mother's father was a traitor. And the traitor, traitor had one. Like the Onyema family, traitors had conquered. Heavy traitors, that's who they are. All of you, eh? He's our Hanese BG. Once you are evil, you are evil. I, I don't want to have anything to do. I don't care who you are. Once you are evil, you are evil. I don't care who you are. So you, you, uh, and he's insulting uh, How many years old are you? How many years old do you think I am? Is it because I have this uh, uh, baby face? I am 53. I am a child. I am an elder. I can't wait at all. Uh, this small boy, uh, that young man, uh, idiot. Um, uh, uh, I'm calling me young man. I, I, I kept quiet. It's only this year they know my true age. See, I've been hearing those small boys, that small boy. He's gone. I'm older than them. I am older than the police. I am older than Aisha Buhari. I am older than Aisha Buhari. will be calling me dead. I am older than Aisha Buhari. But you go to her and you bow. You lie down on the floor. She march on you. You come and be telling me you're rubbish. I'm telling you what kind of idiot mad people everywhere. You don't know who we are. If you love Biafra, I'll respect you. <laughs> Once you don't love Biafra, I have nothing to do with you. Not absolutely nothing to do with you. You're a waste of space. You people, we are busy lying. Now you are brought in BBC. You think you can damage me? You think you can damage my reputation? Is that what you think? I have not stolen from anybody. None of you have contributed money to IPOB. Nobody in the... How many did? Is uh, Madame Erewa? Obi Debian and a few other people. They are not up to time in America. They are not up to time in the USA that contributed to our so-called defense fund. No way we. That popular defense. None of them contributed. Every idiot. You see a madman, a, a lunatic. Every that they caught his dreadlocks in the village. And one day we'll get him. And then he will tell us how, where, and when we embezzled. They, let me tell you why they're saying all of these things. They, they are saying I embezzled money because they want the Fulanese to succeed. They know that it's only IPOB that has the men to defend our land. They know that they know that very clearly. So what they're not doing is let them put pressure on you, so the seeds of doubt inside you, so you will not support IPOB, and our land will be defended. You don't know that? It's a very simple game. Why do you think they have come out these days to be talking of them? Because I said quite rightly. Anybody referring to himself or herself as a Niger that is a complete idiot. I, I stand on it till tomorrow morning. Doesn't make any sense. 
makes no sense. If you say from south south to even the worst bo buffoon, it makes no sense. And you cannot defend it. Instead of you to defend your stupidity like a reasonable man, if at all you claim you are, you come out and you try to insult me. When I'm the one feeding you. 20 million I gave you. Cash. Yes or no. True or false. If in that time, ask you, Chenna, you Chenna, Siebu. Look at the was Rikyo building hotels everywhere. The amount of money I pay our consultants in three continents every month without fail. Some of them how far we have gone. The money I pay them, I can use to be building one, one hostel a month. But I cannot was Rikyo. I can't be. I'm under oath to heaven. So was Rikyo building hotel. Building hotel. Now, as, a, as an annex, he built something. He called it Tojubu Library. Deceiving idiots. He fool. You think Jeffrey's going to be like that? So you think we are suffering? My mom died. My father died because of Biafra. You think it is going to build a hopeless Biafra? We are liars and idiots. We are all over the place. That is your dream. That means you don't know me. You don't know who I am. You have no idea who we are. We must continue. BBC is doing the work of Britain. Harold Wilson came to kill all of us. They didn't succeed. Now we have survived. One day, BBC said, let's give them BBC. I thought they were serious. I love the BBC with my wife's interview. I thought they were serious. So. I don't... <coughs> None of us knew that Alamadri is their editor. Konya was a... I was a full animal. He is the one who is in charge of programming in BBC. They are the ones calling me to go and give an interview. On a day like this, that of men of all days, those you are calling are traitors. I asked that idiot, you're answering lower Niger. I said, we are trying to come out of uh, the Nigeria they gave to us. You're naming us again after a river. I dismissed the idiot. All he did is the inbox. Nam the Khan is a scam. Nam the Khan is a con artist. Hey! Somebody who is alive. Now I'm, I'm challenging you live on air. If you're a man this evening or tomorrow, go and publish who I scammed. Go and publish who I conned. Publish it. Say the, the person's name. You have none. Everywhere. Betrayers and saboteurs everywhere. You think you can overwhelm us? You think by your lies with your bad media you can overwhelm us? I say bring it on. If they want media war, we give it to them. Bring it on. We are not like our fathers. We are not doing there is no gentleman here. When we get Biafra, we will be gentleman. Right now, anyhow you want to give it to you. If you want to be very civil about it, we have can have a very civil discussion. You want us to be like Haburo, we give it to you 100%. Because we won't allow you one inch. Rock is finding it very hot. We have collapsed it. There is nobody, in, there is no president in Nigeria. They can't, if they survive up to the end of the year, I know it's a mirror. They cannot anyway. They know it. That's what you claimed. The real oh, uh, uh, We are now waiting. Uh, uh, let Coronavirus finish. He will listen to me. That idiot with the fire will listen to me. After listening to the gospel that I preach, he will go and modify it. Since when did he start saying, uh, uh, let coronavirus finish? Because he heard it from me. He knows we are doing something. He told you he went to America. To go and see who. You are doing attachment with, uh, with uh, middle bad Christians. Did you go to discuss Biafra in America? There was idiots he, he managed to convince in a, in a USA. Ask him, I said, did he discuss Biafra? Ask him to produce one document he gave to the senator discussing Biafra. One document. He has one. But I can give you loads. I can give, if you like, I can make you an ambassador for IPB. You see the senators you are talking to and what you have given them, Biafra. Every time it's Biafra. Ask Tony Nade, you claim you are in America fighting for Biafra, Abi. Give us one document. One letter you wrote to, to a senator. He'll tell it to stop secret. America has an open system. If 
question sharing is open. He is not an American citizen that would warrant his submissions to be classified as a top secret. So what is the big deal? Show, give us one letter. Ah, Sabo. <laughs> you don't know me, do you? You think if you come and be making noise on that, uh, that um, treacherous one zoo channel called channels, you somehow you qualify to denigrate IPOB. We must preach. BBC boy is evil. Our enemies are panicking. They are panicking. Al Majri has given them money. Oh, was written. I said, this note, they have, their, they have their cash now to splash. The only way he's, nobody knew him. The only way he became relevant was because he was gossiping with my name. Without the name and Nam the Kano, Tony Nad is nobody. Who knows him? What has he done? He's a nobody. He claimed he got me bail. Can you see how people lie? We are you a part of my team? Did you work with a job for no? When I go to court, I have over 50, 60 lawyers coming in solidarity. You only come once. And you claim you. Did you see how. Are you sure he's not. He's, 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 he's a man. He's a man. He's a man. After working hard, a job for working hard, you want to come and claim glory from the back. You don't know I'll be doing this program, yes? You think I'll do gentleman and give a presidential address and go? No, there's no need for that. Since we're in the gutter, let's go to the gutter together. Okay, okay. BBC was said today, in case you have, you have missed it. BBC was said that they went to Igbo land. There is nobody. There is no Alamajiri anywhere. Everything is quiet. That uh, the fighting going on in a boy state is between two villages. <laughs> they want us. Uh, do you know how the videos that I have? I don't want to release them because if I do, they say IPB is a terrorist group. That's what I kept it. That's what they're looking for. Oh, you all this while you're not doing anything in our land they, they want me the same thing they did with our transmitter they want me to bring out the videos of our operations in Ebony so they can now say hey, I think it's a terrorist group <laughs> then we are smarter than them BBC was said that all the Janja weed in our land there are no we are there is no Janja weed in our land and luckily for us before I came on air somebody did a very wonderful job Umar Balasi, always doing a very good job. He gave us the names of 350 Igbo communities and villages where the Fulani are today. Today. BBC Igbo, that is because we asked them, why can't you go and do a documentary? BBC Igbo is telling the world, telling the apparent BBC in London, that there is nothing like a Fulani in Igbo land. BBC Igbo with Igbo people walking inside there. Igbo people are walking in BBC. They said there is no Fulani in our land. Something happening before our eyes with videos and in clearly in broad daylight. They said there is no. These they are the people walking with Niamudu. And that will relate. I don't even know why. And that's why I don't like mentioning his name. Now they will say he will get more money tomorrow. They say he has arrived. Now they come and show your name. Now come and take more money. Even that pig in the creek. Ah, sorry. They will get, they will make more money tomorrow. But I am trying to let our people understand what their game is. They are not for Biafra. These are these are, these are double agents. I know them. One mouth is Biafra. The other one is you. If they are fighting for Biafra, they cannot be in, in Biafra land. They cannot be in Nigeria. They will either be in prison, in exile, or in the grave. That is how you know a freedom fighter. Ordinary Catalonia, their leader is in exile. In Europe, that is apparently civilized. 
This idiot is somewhere drinking Okokoro, talking nonsense, shaking his head like a possessed chicken. Talking rubbish. Trying to malign Nam the Kano. So Igbo men in their natural stupidity will say, oh no, we can't give him money. We don't trust him. I don't know who to give money to. That's why I said go to WIC. I don't need your money. We've been surviving without it. Ask them in and move on. You let them take over villages. Let them take it over. We'll fight our way in. It may take us years. We'll fight our way in. Because Igbo men love gossiping. Nothing entices an Igbo man like God. You see, and it is something your old man was asking. Oh, but they said in the can eat money. And I asked him, I said, ask the man, did I eat your money? Did you give money to IPOB? Go and go to your village and ask. Or oh, maybe some of you have been impressing your wives and your girlfriends that you support IPOB. Okay, I understand. I understand. So you're lying to your wives, huh? Maybe because our mothers are very so she'll ask you, oh, what are you doing to support IPOB? You say, I'm giving them money. I want you to come out and present yourself. That is nobody. Nobody. Go on. No Igbo. Let me tell you one thing. No Igbo man can. If I said Igbo man can keep hand in his pocket and give you 50,000 naira to you, 50,000 naira to you, say, take this one and go and do Biafra. It's him. It's never, it's not done anyway. No Igbo man can do it. Even the billionaire can never do it. But when they go to the media in Abuja, they are bragging. They are saying, ah, IPB is giving us a tough time. They say, ah, it's us now. We are with them. They are our boys. <laughs> they are liars. Ask them. Is there any, even, take a name. Tell us we are, give us proof. We say, as soon as we place, I gave IPOB, I gave them the kind of this money to go and fight for Biafra. And that money, I don't know where it went to. I want to disgrace all of you before the whole world because um, humanity is listening. When I finish this program, only on Facebook alone will be 2 million people rich. I said, to have our publicity, 2 million rich. Now, Nibu man thinks he has sense. That is why listen to fools like uh, Tony Nadi, you idiot. Can you to ask a simple question? Uh, I agree, you embezzled money, but whose money did you, did you embezzle your money? <laughs> That's all. And end of story. I said, the boy is saying, Nam the Kano is a con man, he's a con artist. But I Nam the Kano gave you 20 million cash to do something. Did you do nothing? Yes or no? You, didn't. you called DSS for his men. And you still have the guts to stand up and be. That means you have no shame. Don't work, work, work. BBC, book. There are 350 villages in Jaffa land with uh, Fulani in it. For your information. Enugu, we have 72. Ibito Wak, it's plenty. I'll give it to BBC. I want everybody, in fact, prepare an article with all these names. We are going to throw BBC with this. I said BBC main headquarters in England. We will pursue them with this. Since BBC will come to do it, they are beginners. Over on Waka, their kids, I see their faces, their children struggling to speak Igbo language. Look at those that claim they're elders. When they speak Igbo, they add English. Go and see my interview when I told the BBC Igbo were irreasonable people. I gave an interview. I didn't add one English language. Not one. For hours we spoke. Not one single English language. Not one. Not one word. Take a look at Daibu. You cannot speak Igbo language. <laughs> oh dear me. <laughs> we are proceeding many committees I said 300 plus 300 plus BBC is claiming they have not seen it they don't know what is happening that Fulani are coming to sell Kanama and go back who told you that who told you that BBC or the wider BBC since after the war as they have done BBC is in Hong Kong Everything they will report in Hong Kong. Every riot, everywhere, everything happening to Palestine, everywhere you go to, they are there. Ask yourself, a war that cost five million lives, why is it that BBC have never done one single documentary in recent times? Not one. They came to my house and interviewed me. 
I mean the proper or you Bobby BC, not this fake the idiots you have in the village. That they come okay. Real BBC came to my house. We had an interview. They saw the crowd that came to see me. Yeah, all they ask is, is how, how do you feel now? I said, these are my people. If I had something to release that very video of BBC in my house, interviewing me, I meant the proper, oh, you go BBC, not the one. They were shocked because a new colonialist, their interest is suppressed. Biafra is the key. Once they can hold Biafra down, they can hold the whole of Africa down. That's what Nyawad uh, is doing for them. And they do more cook. Who was because only interested in hotel? He will build a male hostel. Okay, if you don't find out, female hostel. He will build one for vice chancellor and one for teachers. <laughs> Hey, freedom fighting, sorry. Because all these people are criminals, they are saying there is no way this man cannot be a criminal like themselves. They don't have a different breed altogether. They don't know that. I am and I'm the canon. I don't do all this nonsense you do. My father was a very rich man, not ostentatious. I had the finest education that his money could afford. We are not poor. Have never been. That is why a poor man cannot be a freedom fighter. If you are not full of yourself, you cannot be a freedom fighter. You cannot go everywhere. You, you claim you are a warlord in the creek. Somebody is in prison. And get the 20 million you took. Deliver on that thing you didn't deliver. I give you money to give to Avengers, you don't give them. <laughs> oh, dear me. Unbelievable. We must continue. BBC will not investigate the Holocaust. No, they will not. <laughs> it's about one million. About one million died. But it was five million. And they know the truth. And they're lying about it. They're lying. It was their own man, Frederick Foster, that said, my country is evil. That's what he said. What Britain did to Biafra is a shame. Has Mord ever complained? Has Mord ever come as a leader? They don't know the meaning of leadership. They think that being a leader is having a red cap and going to Abuja and begging for money or begging to be governor or begging to be vice president. Leadership of beggars. I don't beg anybody. The white speakers, that's how I speak in court. That's how I speak outside the court. That's how I, that was how I spoke when I got home. When they gave me their useless condition. Don't go out. Don't see 10 people. They're all rubbish. I was an, an unarmed man. From the way they speak, you know how angry they are. That when they connive with Al Mustafa and Buratai to kill me, that they didn't succeed. They are so bitter. Kato was inviting Al Mustafa to a so they can all be one happy Almajiri family. Has he condemned what Almajiris are doing? Has he people don't know people no longer reason? According to they no longer have to reason. Do you see it? Has he ever complained about what Almajiri is doing? Because he's one of them. <laughs> Freedom. This are the, they gave us oh, an as a chairman is from Arewa. Flanagan Janjaweed. All your governors. When even Imo tried to say no, they from number four they brought hope of them. That is the way they own the all the freedom fighters they claim you have. They group them for you. They couldn't get me, that's why they came to kill me. So you don't know. Now you know. Buried for 50 years. Beaten shameful role in Gaffra. Shameful. Shameful. BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation. Shameful. 50 years. No investigation. 50 years. Can you claim you are independent? Your, your fair, your objective. We don't need BBC. Bro. We don't need. They can go to hell. We don't need them. We are going to fight another major media battle in front with those. The who are safi. Not all these uh, refrains having this. Alamajiri. 
You open the multiple Facebook account. You talk rubbish. You think that goes anywhere. We are the ones the world is afraid of. IPOB. We want impacts. Go and ask the Swiss government. Go and ask the government the way we want. We want impacts. And we always do. Every time we fight, we win. Every time we fight, we win. We are IPOB. We always win. Eventually, we win. That's why I know Biafra is coming. And the zoo is in trouble. By the time we are done with the Fulani, every Fulani emir in the north will be overthrown by the local population. You watch and see what's going to happen. You're playing with us. You think we are you are in the same league as us? <laughs> you are you are dreaming. BBC go and investigate what happened. You you are busy lying. You people came to defend the indefensible. Mordo was very happy. Oh, uh, Dango tell it to me. Have you seen the video of uh, Alamaji changing the delivery on, on Dangote trucks? They are sc scraping the names off. Have you seen the video? Can somebody please play? Let me see if I can even play it so you can hear it very well. So you, you think, I, I won't show you the video. I'm only going to play the audio for you so you can hear it. I don't have that technology here with me. Your friends, I'm calling you. This is Dangote. I want to put you alive. Dangote! They are now cleaning the Dangote, written on every Dangote vehicle. Look every Dangote vehicle cleaned? They are cleaning it. This is uh, our back. In our back? Where they are packing the Dangote vehicle. They are cleaning the Dangote name from the truck. Cleaning all the Dangote written on it. The Dangote name being wiped off, they bring in Alamaji, they clean it. They go back to the north, they write Dangote, they bring them in, they clean it. These are the people writing to God. And he accepted it. He cannot speak because he's compromised. He cannot speak. He's being blackmailed. All the people you call your leaders, they cannot speak because I will imagine you have all their dossier here, Fulani. Somebody says he's fighting for Biafra, but he wants to go to the root of new Nigeria. And you're listening to such a person. And you're telling me your brain is correct. <laughs> huh? Oh, I, I want my village to be autonomous, but I want to go to the Sultan of Sokoto. Are you okay? Are you, is your brain correct at all? As I said, the real people died in 1970. Not all this chaff you see every, everywhere now. Everywhere you see them. Very, very sad indeed. And in the midst of all these things, that's what they always do. They are the of their land. Instead of them to come and say, oh, IPOB, you have the numbers, you have the men on the ground, you have the infrastructure, let's see how we can go. No, envy. They want to bring distraction to distract us. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, oh, 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 no, the guy is a scammer, he's a con artist. And I kept asking myself, but who did we scam? Oh, so you've been fighting for freedom is, is a scam? And that back here that stole 13.9 billion of money belonging to us, clinic is not a scam, or the school meal is not a scam, or making hope who's on them from number four, Supreme Court Governor of Imo State is not a scam. Somebody fighting for freedom is, I didn't blame them anyway, because they are zoo animals. They grew up in a system where everybody reasons like an animal, so they are animals that don't reason very well. You think I won't say it live on eh? That you called me a con artist or a scammer? That means you don't know me. That's what they called me. Ask them, who did he con? Who? Where? Oh, Arthur Ayego, who? Who contributed? I went to America. The video is there. They gave me nothing. These are people who are in love with hamburger. They gave me nothing. So where how? Where is the money? The whole of America contributed only $3,000. As I've said, not up to the, my flight ticket from here to New York. So where did this money come from? From heaven? Do you see how foolish people are? Do you see what envy does to an evil man? Envy can reduce an evil man to nothing. An evil man you see that you think is reasonable, envy can reduce that man to nothing, to zero. That was the world. Oh, tomorrow night, would you come from the president? Now that, that's all. The same thing they're doing today. You see how there is. I don't know what. I don't know what destroy. What demon is inside them? Ibo. Have you ever seen people fight anything Ibo? If it's not Biafra, I won't do it. 
Have you seen anything under Igbo that is working? Anything in this life with Igbo in it, Igbo Association, this, Igbo World, this, Igbo that. Have you ever seen anything with the word IGBO as part of it that is going ahead? Show me and tell me. Where? That was how I abandoned it. Elohim said, I'm upset. I'm angry with Igbo. I'm God is angry with us. I, 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 God is very angry. And he will use Fulani to teach you a lesson. So in your next life, when you hear a prophet of God speaking, you listen. You are about to be taught a very bitter lesson. All of you. You'll be taught a very bitter lesson. And I have a defense. I told you. When the time comes and he asks me to leave this army, I will say no to you. Has the time not come? Has the time not come? I'm asking you. Has he not come? Is it not very clear? That the enemies are now here. Have you not seen them? Go to your village where is the there. Igwe is a president general. They're all busy selling land to people that will come and kill us. They're not scammers. No, they are not. Hope is not a scammer. No, is it not the kind of what makes Nam the Kano a scammer and a con artist? Because he refused to be compromised. The person calling me a con artist was somebody I gave 20 million naira to. In two installments. Not the ones I've been given them before. Do you see how people, do you see how people, you know, once you become corrupt, once you don't know if you're a American, a freedom fighter, or a rogue, a double agent, you become, your life becomes messed up. You took money from a con artist. <laughs> Unbelievable. Saboteurs are in BBC. They're all working together. And you know the funniest thing? <laughs> hmm. You know the funniest thing? I read BBC where again today. BBC. The headline before coming on air. I'll read it to you in Igbo language. And Amaka, please post it. I read it so you can understand. After appearing on BBC today, that uh, route of full and agent, to the Nade, full, whole, uh, I told you before that we are coming. The, the problem that the full and have is this they have done everything possible to make it almost virtually, I should say, impossible for those they claim Igbo men that have money to support IPOB. They don't want that. I told you one day, I'll, I'll tell you the person's name, one politician that claimed that he was supposed to be, went and told his Fulani people that if, about, if, if any Igbo man gives money to Nam the Khan, he's going to buy weapons and he will fight Nigeria, he will defeat Nigeria and he will kill every Igbo politician. Let me shock you now. Do you know why they've been saying all these things? Nam the Khan is is a con artist. Only one and others of them gossiping behind my back. Do you know why? They don't want me to buy weapons. That's all. To defend our land. Do you know what they have done instead? I'll read it for you. Ndi bonine gebito otu otu na anaira nodinihu. It means every evil person. Nam the can is a con artist and a scammer. That is from the idiot opening his mouth to talk rubbish. That from now almost every evil person will contribute 100 naira each. <laughs> hey! Oh dear me, unbelievable. They want you to contribute money to them. I told you that Fulani is remoting them. Fulani is afraid, given all the brokers you've been making, rather than give that money to a World Evil Congress that has a bit of um, a tiny bit of um, pedigree left, or should I say, um, reputation. Tony Nade, they brought Onyeko money to decorate them. Now they wanted to pay 100, 100 naira. A month. <laughs> Everyone to defend our land. What I told them years ago, they said no. They called me a criminal. You're a scammer. You're a con artist. The same thing they have just done today. 
Ha, you were man, you were IGBO. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I told him I come with facts and figures. I don't believe in talking rubbish. When I push you, I'll show you where to land. This idiot was written by, by Zikano. If I wanted to do his job, I could have been doing it by now. I said no. Nibizikano recruited Tony Nade, gave him office, gave him a desk, I'll be feeding him. And he's talking rubbish. Ask him, you are in Lower Niger Congress. Who are your members? You say you're the Secretary General. Okay, then who is the Provost? It's only him. He is Secretary General. He is President. He is Vice President. He is the Provost. He's the Treasurer. He is the um, Financial Secretary. One man, and all of you are there. Look. Oh, yeah. Stupidity is a disease. And the woman has it in abundance. I tell them to their faces. I tell them. They think they have sense. You want to think, oh, I'm, I'm clever. I call black. I'm, I'm, I'm sensible. No, the guy is a, is a scammer. He is a scammer. He, he, he took, uh, he, he took uh, defense fund. Did you contribute to defense fund? No. Do you know anybody who contributed to defense fund? No. So uh, what is Nyangwodo doing now? Asking for money to buy, to defend our land. What is that? It's called uh, Igbo leadership. <laughs> oh, they are zoo. zoo. They, they are beginners. Beginners. BBC should be ashamed of themselves. BBC will go through the comments. Go through the comments when you were interviewing a uh, uh, and that he uh, file carrying it. I don't know where he comes from. He's ashamed of Biafra. Ashamed of the name Biafra. We went to Niger Delta with fire and brimstone to let them know the truth. The truth is that there is nothing called Niger Delta. I respect those that fought and died under freedom for the John issue. Because Niger is just another name major. That's what that is to it. From the mouth of the pig, the pig opened his mouth and said, that Niger Delta is only part of River State, uh, uh, Bayasa, and the part of um, Delta, Lower Delta. They don't even know where the, the Delta starts, the Niger Delta one, that nobody knows. For years they've been asking me, oh, where is your, remember when Tony used to say, where is the boundary? Where is the boundary? Where is the boundary? I told him I don't need a physical boundary. Use your brain. Where you see any woman trying to be rapper? Since then, has he mentioned boundary? I told them we are intelligent, they don't understand it. I've been watching it. That's why they call me watching it. And they too watching it. Because Elohim is with me. Always. BBC, Ibo. Your job, your job, the job they sent you to do in Ibo land has crashed completely. You cannot go anywhere. Uh, we, we are going, I will use you to set an example as to how formidable IPOB is. We will set you as an example. You will know. Right now, when you write, maybe you get about 50 reactions. Very soon, you see what will happen to you. You'll be writing for Fulani. You people should go and form as many fake Facebook accounts as possible with Igbo names to react when you write because you're finished. This very battle with BBC will fight it to death. You have money, you have rich, you have everything. We will fight it to death. Because you people support evil. We lost 5 million people. Not 500, 5 million. And you want me to be quiet. You are insane. You are insane. Ordinary pipeline security. People have no shame. A pipeline security guard. Pipeline for who? For one Alahaji Daigome from somewhere. He said, I'm a militant. I'm, I'm a Delta militant. <laughs> but you're, you're a security How <laughs> are oh, man? You are an ordinary security guard guarding the pipeline of the people you claim are your oppressors. 
Maybe from there you do small cuisine bunkering. You you open the pipe and you collect a little bit. And you are a warlord. You collect a little bit of kerosene. You sell. <laughs> Pipeline security guard. You do all your bunkering. But you still have no shame to take 20 million from me. No shame. No shame. After taking money, you called your full and friends in DSS in Iguacha to go and arrest my men. So when we asked, he said, oh, I don't know now. Hey, it can no longer go ahead. Did you refund the money? Did you refund the money? Toad, did you refund the money? <laughs> I have no money, yes. But I bought palliative for our people. Not IPOB money from my own money. I bought palliative for our people. I could have built a mansion with it. I should have built um, um, a female hostel at Michael Opera University in you know why. I've been collecting rent money. That's what Zika is doing. Did the Zika buy any palliative for anybody? He's molding block to build an extension to build an extension to the hostel. And that is a freedom fighter. A freedom fighter. In your land, that's a freedom fighter. No wonder we are finding things difficult. There's a you people are not well. We are not well. A hotel here. Building hotels. So you want me to be like them? That American, he has no house. He's a, he's a, he's a homeless. So you don't know that that makes me more credible. That means that anything people give to me goes towards the struggle. So you don't know is a badge of honor. There is no serious freedom fighter on this earth that has a mansion. Not one. Name. <laughs> uh, anyway, when you go to school in the zoo, that's what happens. Not one. Not one bag of Gary. But in his house, you know where he has Olympic size swimming pool. He's a leader. <laughs> has any award given me money before? Any award have you given me any money before? So on what grounds are you lie, lying to people and saying I I don't people? I'm a scam. Now the can is a scam. Based on what? Who did he scam? Where and when? How? Defense fund. Did he give me defense fund money? What? Did anybody who contributed to this? In America, I was in the USA. I did a town hall meeting and I asked them, how many of you here contributed? Only Madame Mary and a few people contributed. Even the money that Obi Dobianu sent to an, to an account being run by traitors. I never got to Germany. In America, not up to 10 people contributed. But when you hear Alamaji and Yoruba media, their irats, talk about defense fund, you would think that money was contributed by people from everywhere. IPOB expenses every month is $108,000. A month. That's what we spend. Oh dear. I feel sorry for you people. Near word, an old man gossiping, gossiping. <laughs> oh dear, the idiot from LNC told him not a lying. I want to give him free publicity today because tomorrow they will pay him. No, no, on Monday when the banks open, Alamadi will pay him. They said, Keep, keep talking. I'm responding because they invited him to a program that Onye Kongweno was in, somebody that I have respect for. And the award was there. Somebody I abhor because he's a traitor. The award is a murderer and a traitor. I know that he knelt down to beg Tinubu to be governor. These days, the governors no longer see him. His car is spoiled. He doesn't have 100,000 to fix his car. Go and ask him. He will leader. <laughs> The car that I use, people people buy for me. So why do I need to go and buy a car? <laughs> I 
The idiot wrote to the Nadi. That in the Kanu ruined, hijacked, and derailed the network of grassroots startups. Can you believe that? When, when I was on air saying start LPB formula, he said I hijacked his structure. Who's telling me from where? 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 How? How? Where? And when? How? IPOB is on over 80 countries around the world. Did you? Hi. Oh, dear me. Ukwasi. People are liars. Tony Nadi is a liar. Unrepentant liar. Working for Alamajiri. Working for Alamajiri. They think I don't know them. I do. I know them very, very well. I know them. <laughs> they said they, they, that they, he went to uh, Ochanja, went to Ariara, went to Obete. Tony Nadi went to Obete. Went to Obogonogo. Everywhere between Bonnie and Abakliki. Now he's adding Bonnie. After I must have preached that Boni is Igbo, is Obani, he's now adding it as well. <laughs> I started up with a man, you found me the 20 million I gave you to betray my man. They went to prison because of it. Long detention. Because you betrayed them. I gave you 20 million naira cash. Return that money to me if you're a man. Return it to me. Because you're a thief. You're a thief. You're talking rubbish. After calling me, you're not calling me a can, can you believe such nonsense? A criminal is not calling somebody as a criminal. Can, can you believe such rubbish? Huh? You're the one owing me money. You stole from me. Mm. Very tragic. Very tragic. He said that the Melodic Kano, who has been rock solid behind, of course I told you that. He spoke to me like a father to a son. If you don't know. He advised me, I said to him, you have my love, sir, but I can't take your advice. Before you were recruited to be doing what you are doing, you never went anywhere. You are a nobody. If you come to the Afghanistan tomorrow, they will steal you. You are a nobody. You are a nobody. You can do all your sabo work with Channel TV and with BBC Evo. If you see your leg on the ground in the land, you will be stoned. I banished organizer. I said to them, no public meeting. I have met in public since then. If you say you're strong, you try now. And see what happens to you. More good look everywhere. Everywhere. Lying and lying and lying. Went and drafted a very long uh, uh, thesis. Our name, the count, destroyed LNC. I asked you, what is the meaning of LNC? You said it is Lower Niger Congress. I, so I said, I asked you, how about Upper Niger? What about Upper Niger? You couldn't answer. I said, from the name of a river now to the Lower Niger, I told you that you're a madman. Our work was there. Aris, our work was there. Anything I tell you, I give you proof. If Asari is denying that he took money from me, Uchen Nasikebu is there. He called me and I authorized it. Asari did not speak to me when I sent my money to you in Kotonu. How much did he demand from me? 200 million. Because you're a hungry tout. You're nobody. You're a hungry tout that may have lifted up AK for the seven assault rifle before. That's all. You're nobody. They're hungry out. Hungry out. Everywhere. The brain behind what it is. It's not Henry Yorker. That is the brain behind all the things you're doing. Do you have brain? Are you a strategist? No, you're not. Go to him. Go to him. Let's unite. I said, okay, let us unite. After you took my money, you talk to me again after that. You disappeared. You're hungry, man. Turning that is a good question. From nowhere I came out, LNC. 
and I'm the kind of destroyed uh, myself, uh, LA. from nowhere. I don't sleep. I sleep maximum four hours every day. It's been that way since 20, 2009. I work very hard. Very, very hard. Let me see if I can go and take some calls because um, the zoo army this is what we are suffering. When we go out, they arrest us, they make our life difficult. The zoo army stormed the venue of our remembrance in Ahoda, West, in Iguata, and arrested more than seven Biafrans and took them away. This is why people join IPUB. The more you arrest us, the more we continue. The more we come out. You keep arresting. The more we bring them out. The more you arrest. That is why people fall. I don't abandon people. I don't. How many people from Master are in prison and in mortuary? Everybody that fell in our struggle with me. With full honors. And then that comes. <laughs> Then they will see what it means to have to, 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 to honor. I don't know who is calling. Who is that very person calling now? I can't understand these people, for goodness sake. I can't understand them. We must continue. Somebody said, I see Niger Delta is a particular We must discuss it. And I must discuss this Niger Delta stupidity. There's nothing called Niger Delta. It doesn't exist. I respect the freedom that Adaka fought for. Because Zeke and all those people were very foolish. That is why we are doing things differently. We are going to every village. I'm raising up a family. I got the length and breadth of your family. As Igboro was right to fight for Niger Delta Republic, he was right within his own conviction. But that doesn't mean that Niger Delta existed. If you're telling me about a, a John nationalism, I understand that. A John nationalism, of course, yes, I agree. Anything else is rubbish. Not like Niger Delta. At least our sister, Anki Obris, now admitted that we are all related. She wrote it down, I wrote it on my wall, that we are all related by blood. So what are you asking for? So who is Niger and who is not? Yeah, you know, Kabe cannot be Niger Delta because Kalabari is also Igbo. Oh, Popo is Igbo. Andoni is Igbo. So what, how can you divide something that is indivisible? We must debate it. No, I'm now sure that under it. Sasa has no meaning. Absolutely no meaning. And those are natural that are still photoshopping. Today is for saboteurs. Sabo, today is for saboteurs. Because they made us to lose the war. Our fathers fought and died to save us. And the funny thing is that we still have to this day. And the worst part of it is that they are now using the name of Biafra and the nationalism to deceive people. And you think I'm going to allow that to happen? Of course it won't happen. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. The, those in the zoo are still photoshopping their way to oblivion. Three days ago was children's day. That three days ago, they said that whoever was there <laughs> was taking pictures with children. The same picture of a child they took. Last December, they republished. The girl had the same clothing on. But only this time, she's now wearing a um, nail varnish. And somebody is telling me that there is somebody, a president in Asorok, when there is none. I'm waiting for coronavirus to finish. And we collapse the zoo. Not what that did you to say. Who knows him? What's he going to do? Nothing. His attachment is like a tape worm attached to the gut of people and sucking blood for free. He's like a charger weed he's representing. Funny. They have nothing. They are planning to build a pipeline from here to heaven knows where. But they have nothing. Though. Because we allow them, because they have agents like I was they have agents, food and agents working for them. Uh, the, the same way that Finian is working for them. Do you know that almost 70% of Igbo land is full of saboteurs? 
70%. You don't know? 70%. There is one prosecutor in Omo He's a full-fledged flanny agent. You take a IOB to magistrate court from there to high court. Nobody knows asking for money. Very soon, we will be I did say that today we will be driven by our people. I think by now, I will sing a very beautiful song, uh, national anthem. I think we may be able to go into that later. What time is it now? We've been nearly here for two hours, and I want to bring the program to a close. People, we are calling before their time. They will just wait one or two people to be able to say something this very day. One or two people only to be able to say something, please. Our lines are open, and you know it. If you want to call, you can call now, please. If you want to call, you can call now. If you call, we will be able to take your calls. If you call, we can take your calls, please. Our lines are open. Let me see who's calling. Um, there is somebody on the line. Can you hear me? Can you raise your voice, please? Your voice is not strong enough. Raise your voice. Your name and where you're calling from. Hello, sir. Yes, give us your name and where you're calling from. I'm, I'm calling from Italy. Good evening. From Italy. Good evening to you. Please. Your voice is very low. Your voice is very low. Why? I'm calling from Italy. Yes, go ahead. What's your name? What is your name? He, is not, he wants to get himself via the system. The caller on the line, can you hear me? I have the caller on the line, can you hear me? No, that's the problem we have. People call and they don't say anything. They call and they don't say anything and the line crashes. So that brings us to the end of our proceedings today. We have come to the end of our program today. It's a day that we have remembered our heroes and obliterated the creators within us. And I thank each and every one of you very much for listening. And as we always say, without any... No, no, not at all. We have come to the end of our program today, please. We have come to the end of the program. We have finished. Come to the end of the program. Biafra is a religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim, Chiku Kikama Premi Henine is our God. From me, from here, it is good evening.